And now we head to San Francisco with more on what this big drop in first quarter PC sales means for the industry, where we're joined by Matt Crumpton. He's the co-founder of GigWalk. Matt, thanks for joining us. Let's get straight into it. So we saw the PC industry suffering for quite some time today. Consumers moving to more portable devices like smartphones and tablets. So is this a clear sign that the PC model is uh, on its deathbed, if you will? Boy, I think these IDC numbers are a surprise to nobody. You know, they predicted that PC sales were going to go down 6%. They went down 14%. And uh, at the same time, you know, smartphone sales are going up 66% 2013. Tablet sales going up 70% in 2013. It's no surprise. There's no mystery where those PC consumers are going. They're going to uh, mobile devices instead. Well, some of the better performing PC companies like Lenovo are targeting commercial sales or businesses. So is this where the market still has room? People at offices are still working on desktops and on laptops and not really so much on tablets. So is it more the death of the home PC as opposed to the death of the office PC? Boy, that's a good point. And I think that definitely there's still a place for the PC inside of the business world. But surprisingly, there's a lot of companies that are moving to uh, writing software just for uh, tablet devices and, and mobile devices. Uh, companies like GigWalk are, that are pu pushing uh, uh, software directly to mobile phones first and then writing software for PCs later means that uh, PC developers still need to be thinking about uh, the mobile ecosystem when they're looking at business. Well, the Wall Street Journal reported today that Microsoft is developing a new lineup of Surface tablets, to your point, including a 7-inch version expected to go into mass production this year. So does Microsoft and others like Hewlett Packard have to move quicker with their transition strategies to mobile, to tablets? Boy, absolutely. And, you know, I think that a lot of the PC manufacturers are relying on Microsoft to kind of be the innovator in this space. And I think they're putting a lot of eggs in that basket and hoping that Microsoft gets it right. But so far, they've been very unsuccessful in moving people off of things like Windows 7 into Windows 8, even with their Surface tablets that they've got on the market today. Well, right. And, and many analysts, including IDC, and as we saw in Mark's report, say that the recent tumble also due to Microsoft Windows 8, which is geared towards the touchscreen PC. Buyers just appear to be avoiding Microsoft's new Windows 8 operating system. How much uh, of this is to blame? Well, I think it's, it's uh, you know, when consumers are out there looking at different devices that they could purchase, uh, the interfaces that are on uh, Androids or, or iPhone apps are, are a lot more intuitive, and I think customers are looking at things like the Surface tablet and comparing it to some of the other things that are out on the market and really going in a different direction. Well, Apple was not immune from the decline. Some sales of its Macs uh, were given way to iPads and iPhones. Are we seeing cannibalization in the industry? I think that's right, and I think that there's a lot of uh, consumers out there that in the past would have bought a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air and are now instead moving directly to uh, tablets like an iPad or an iPad mini. But I think that you know, the other PC manufacturers out there should be looking to Apple as a model uh, in that they're going through and, and developing many different uh, architectures for uh, consumers to choose from. Let's focus quickly on Dell. Their PC sales figures in the first quarter were worse than other manufacturers. Does this make the Dell deal less attractive, and will this drive down the price of the deal by some of the potential suitors? Boy, I think that, you know, I think investors really need to be looking at uh, where the innovation is happening uh, in that company and, and others like it, and kind of make some uh, choices as far as what they see happening down the road. Okay, thanks very much. We're going to have to leave it there. Matt Crampton, co-founder of GigWalk, thanks for joining us and for that insight.